What's up everyone? This is Big Poner and I'm here on my second day of my Lasser Assassin build. Um, this is going to be just some more gameplay, but it's also going to include um, some talking about my ideas and reasons for making this build. So, as I said in my first gameplay footage video, this is a build that literally no one else is doing, um, which kind of is just like, I think because a lot of people just kind of fall into these patterns where they play things that are familiar, or they're just playing whatever is popular. and. For this build, that's a major oversight, and the reason why is because this build is absolutely insane. Um, my gear isn't optimized, so I don't have any like really good amount of armor for damage reduction. I don't have any huge survivability through my through like a massively stacked um, evasion or anything like this. The main bonuses that we get for survivability is from the ghost shrouds which is just an absolutely crazy defensive skill and then on top of that the tree just offers a ton of damage one of the biggest damages is through the Ascendancy, which takes and gives me three different chances to gain extra chaos damage. One being 25%, uh, 50%, or 100% damage. Which, that's absolutely crazy, especially when you consider that my average hit per attack is over a million damage and I have a crit multiplier of over 800 percent which is just like absolutely crazy you imagine that I wind up hitting a critical and I have that over 800 percent critical multiplier which then if I hit the best proc, adds a hundred percent of that in chaos damage. The early parts in the tree add both physical and chaos damage, so that added chaos damage is then magnified even more by my increases to chaos damage. So essentially, the same the same nodes are are double dipping on the damage. So it's actually possible on my hits to do over 200% of my maximum critical damage, which is pretty crazy, especially when you consider my effective damage, the way the build is currently set up, is 17.4 million DPS, which that alone is absolutely crazy. Um, but when you consider that it's not calculating that possible massive um, those possible massive hits and yeah the um, the 5% I mean 1 in 20 chance of ah there it is <laughs> 1 in 20% uh, 1 in 20 chance of hitting that why would you not just jump? I was clicking jump over there and he just starts walking. You should be able to jump that little guy. It's like, no, I'm gonna walk. So it's not a massive chance, but one out of 20 when you're attacking as fast as this build attacks. Which I've actually not been using my Blood Rage or my Berserk. Because I've been so busy talking. <laughs> Um, it's something that procs a decent amount. I do think that the 
I probably have the damage a little bit overkill right now. Um, I could go for more defensive stats. For a realistic build for most people, you would probably want to cut out some of the damage and add more defensive stats. The thing is, is I'm level 100, and I'm really not dying. Um, I've got like 4100 HP. Stupid bubbles. So that was a that was a tier 16 boss kill with um, without zerking, which obviously I can berserk and do even more damage, but it's really not needed. Which that's what I mean. It kind of gets to a point where where like adding more damage is just kind of being super excessive and it's not really actually doing anything for you um, I mean even my even my debuffs it's kind of like <laughs> it's fun to be like look at how much damage I have but I don't know if it's exactly um, the, the best goal to be shooting for. It's kind of like my Frostblades Raider. Yeah, I, I did have the build set up where I was doing over 10 million DPS. But the build at 10 million DPS versus it at 6.5, as far as like the feeling for mapping, I don't really notice the difference in the damage very much because everything is pretty much getting one-shotted anyways. What I do notice the difference is by having more defensive stuff, the character isn't gonna die as easily. It, which, you know, that dying is something you definitely notice. <laughs> And, you know, you have to think about things as far as, like, what it is your goals for your character. I don't think there's very many people that, well, I know there's not very many people that have a level 100 assassin. Um, it's one of the lowest played classes of the season. Um, obviously, it's higher than, than a few others because some people did start with the the poison builds but I think early in the game a lot of people veered away from the poison build um, and obviously the massive portion of the community was going for the necro builds which I did a necro build and it's it's fun to mess around with but honestly it's not something that I can play that much I have a I have a really crazy necro build, but I think I stopped playing it at like level 92. Um, I will do a video as far as like directions you can take the necro. There's a ton of stuff that you can do with necros. Um, there's also a bunch of different choices as far as directions that you can go with your gear in order to min-max the necros, which I don't even think most people are aware of. Um, how to min-max the necro, and realistically, what each option takes. Like, for instance, um, one option with the necro is to go for a level scaling, because the most damage on the necro will come from um, increasing uh, upon the, the other above the other stats is increasing monster level. I don't even know why I'm doing placing towers. Bad habits, man. We don't need no towers. So like, the direction I decided to go on my necro was kind of the cheaper one, the cheaper of the two options, because one option 
to get the maximum possible number of specters is to either go for level 31 specter or to get extra specter and I believe level 20, 25 or 26. Uh, they'll have to check on that. But the reason why I've, I haven't really played much Necro is it's just kind of... It, it feels too lazy to me. Like, they made it a lot better. And I played Necro last season, and it is so much better than it was last season. Being able to target target stuff um, is really crucial. It's just it, you're still left in this place where all you're really doing is basically just trying not to die, and to me, that's kind of just not that much fun. Um, everyone has their own play style preferences. So, I'm not dogging on other people's choices or favorite classes, but it's just not my favorite thing. I did enjoy it for a while, enough to invest a lot of currency into the, into the build, but not enough to keep with it. The one thing that I do not like is not having an open slot for my portal. I know it's I know it's not a um, it's not a huge inconvenience but <laughs> Still makes it not as smooth. Low on mine. And that's my example of small stuff blocking damage and not making it as smooth. That little tiny rock was defending that. It's defending that totem. Obviously, those dudes are annoying. Ow. I got all my gross shrouds back up. The other cool thing about this build is the free movement speed. And it doesn't just give us free movement speed, it also gives us restored mana, which is the reason why I can run such low mana and everything still procs. Which is absolutely amazing. And if we needed any other reason to take this node, it gives us 20% attack speed. Which, I mean, 20% attack speed by itself is absolutely huge. And when you throw all of that other utility on top of it, it's just such an insane path. Ow! I hate your bubbles. In a perfect world, there would be no minion bubbles. The world of Path of Exile is definitely not a perfect world. And I can definitely attest to that. Because the beginning of the season, I was getting kicked off the server every time I tried to use a waypoint or a portal. Which if you want to talk about an annoying way to try and power level a character, try getting disconnected every time you use a portal or a waypoint. Which basically meant I couldn't use portals at all unless I was like finished with the zone. Because... I would lose my portal when it would kick me off. So like if I'm halfway through a 
a zone or something like that, and I have to teleport back, it would disconnect me and put me back in town. It was, like, the most annoying, like, glitch ever. It was a very frustrating beginning to the season. <laughs> I really am a fan of, of uh, the totems. My totems are not optimized yet. I do have the I do have the setup to make them four links in one of my weapons, but one of my weapons I have to replace. So I crafted it onto that weapon because I didn't want to spend currency upgrading a weapon that I didn't want to keep. It works for me, but it's still like a 420 DPS one-hander, so I mean, it's it's not a bad weapon, but it's not up to the big poner standards. But, I'm definitely happy with it right now, because I have been making so many builds in such sweet, um, so many builds in such a short amount of time that currency is really hard to keep up with. That is why I am basically just running maps to run maps. Also... I'm enjoying the character, so... I mean, it's kind of like... I feel weird with the level 100 character when you're, like, playing it, because it's like... I could be gaining experience on a different character, but... So, I feel like being level 100 demotivates me from playing, but at the same time, it's like... I don't know, I'm having fun with it. After I hit level 100, though, I, like, at first was like, I don't want to play this character anymore. And then I made the Necro, which was like a huge change up from what I had been doing. And then I did um, the Frostblades Raider, which I had so much fun with. Um, and it's still, like... I would say between this and the Frostblades, I would say are like my two favorite. Um, partially because they're so unique, but also they're like really interactive and fast play style, which just makes the game so much more fun. Um, at least to me, I hope some of you guys agree. Everyone that I know that has been doing the Frostblades Raider, from leveling it to... Um, People that have swapped it into an end game build are absolutely loving it. Um, so I'm glad that I was able to bring some enjoyment to some to some other players. Uh, I will do more stuff like this. I will be creating more builds. Um, I have a few other builds that I've done. I will do guides on. The reason why I haven't rushed to put out guides on them is because they're not as smooth of gameplay as um, the the Raider. The Raider I wanted to put out first because it's just absolutely an amazing and, and fun build from beginning to end. And uh, this one too. But like I have an eye shot that's absolutely amazing for for mapping but it has like a, what I would call a rough zone and the rough zone is when you're like a certain level it, it's just really um, it's just really difficult if you don't have like really good gear um, like I I got frustrated a little bit obviously my, when I first started playing it it wasn't completely optimized um, so I POB'd the tree so I guess it just traumatized me a little bit. Um, it was my it was my first character after the Frostblades Raider, so my expectations were really high. But I want to give you guys realistic um, portrayals of the stuff that I'm offering, 
the thing that frustrates me the most uh, in games like this is when people misrepresent builds to players like saying oh this build is is so easy to make and so cheap yet the build doesn't work with out a helm enchantment or you know it has to be like a high level before it even works or you have to have some specific item that's a rare drop with specific mods like that's that's not fun if you don't aren't realistic with players someone can jump into a build and invest the currency that they have and the build's not playable for them which that's not fun for anyone to invest a bunch into a build and you know not even be able to to efficiently play or have fun i think it's fine to put up builds that are are expensive builds um but to represent them as they actually are i think is the most important thing like like this build as it is right now it's super expensive obviously and it's obviously a, a level 100 tree so if i were to just be like oh look at this build get this gear and and not explain to you that you know that the tree is not going to be the same um a lot of the gear is extremely hard to get or expensive um that could lead to a lot of people not having very much fun <laughs> and being pissed off at me and i want to be the reason why you guys have more fun not why you have frustrations or get pissed off anyways uh, thanks for watching i will upload some more content soon i have a lot of free time right now so i will try to get up all of my build guides and stuff like that so you guys have some content and some different builds and directions you guys can go i do want to give out some options uh i know the necro build is really popular it's kind of it's kind of late um in in the season this is kind of like my warm-up season for creating content and videos like this i'm obviously new to creating guides for this game um, creating content for this game i'm also new to doing um youtube I've had a YouTube account for a long time, but I've really only uploaded um, stuff off of a phone when I, from when I used to play Pokemon, which was basically just like camera record and upload. So this is definitely a new domain for me, but I will continue to try to produce better stuff for you guys. Thanks for watching.